This is Robert Littal with BlackSportsOnline.com, and I have a very <laughs> special guest. I know you've missed her like I've missed her, but she is back. <laughs> Michelle Beadle, thank you so much for coming on it. And listen, first question I got to ask you is you, you were gone for a while. You seem yes. real happy. Gone. <laughs> what made you come back to all of this madness that <sighs> sports media? I know I was gone. First of all, uh, it's too formal. I feel like we've known each other too long for all this, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know what? I was gone. I was gone like 800 days without work, which is uh, some sort of a, it's a personal record for Ooh. sure. Um, you know, it was just time. It was time to sort of just talk again about the things that I love with people that I like and to do it just in different ways than I had been used to, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, yeah, it was, I think when you have enough time away from something and you can kind of just clear your brain and process it all and then, and then figure out what you want to do next, it's, it's really a blessing. And, and I, I know how lucky I am to have had the time to figure that out uh, and I appreciate it, but yeah, it's, it's fun again. Like everything's fun again. It feels like the beginning. <laughs> Which so I like. how did you get involved with, with FanDuel and tell us a little bit about, about the show running back with uh one of my favorites, the Riz God, Shams, <laughs> and mean... Chandler Parsons, who's, uh, who's been a little bit of hot water. <laughs> lately um so, so we, we we got the ball rolling with that already how did you get involved with them and what made you decide this was the kind of the show that you wanted to come back to i mean look there's no secret shams is is building an empire right now mm -hmm. shams is doing his thing he is the youngest 20 something year old but the oldest soul i have ever <laughs> met in my entire life um and he he knows what he's doing and he's he's smart about it and he's got a great personality and he was we talked a few times before they had made sort of final decisions on what the show was going to look mm -hmm. like. And I was glad I got to, because I, I didn't really know Shams other than I, like everybody else, I follow him mm -hmm. for, for breaking news. <laughs> um, one of the few people I have notifications on. And so when, the, when the offer came and we're like, all right, we're doing this. It was, it was pitched as a casual hang just mm -hmm. three days a week. Talk about the NBA with, and then I didn't know at the time and then found out it was Eddie and, and Chandler. And I was like, Oh, just, I just knew Shams and I'd already said, yes. So I was like, Oh, this is going to be great. I knew enough about Chandler from his playing days to know that he's a loose cannon and he's playing with house money. So I, I that's the best kind of partner you want because they're not afraid. And as we found out this week when he pissed off the world, uh, and then, and then Eddie, who is, is one half of the, et cetera's podcast, of course, with Kevin Durant, who is a hoop head. I mean, that dude, loves it, breathes it, plays it. It just, the game is, is in him. And so it's a great, weird group of four people just talking about basketball. And we've gotten to know each other better and better as the weeks have gone on. You know, it's hard to launch a show remote. It, mm. You just kind of have to figure it out as you go. We've only had one week together in person. And so I, I'm proud of what we've done in a short period of time. And it, I think it's, I'm having a blast. Like if I get up in the morning and I'm excited to go to work, that's, mm. that's literally all you can ask for at this point in the game. That's it. You, you know, the, the NBA is is different wow. from when you were last kind of really in into it, you know, with social media, uh, you know, the, the 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 players, the media kind of seem at odds all the time. It's, it's a little yeah. bit of a different type of game that's being played now. What, what do you see as the major differences in the NBA from when you kind of started in this business to kind of where we're at, you know, now in regards yeah. to not just the play, but how the coverage uh, of, of the NBA is. It's, it's the lot. Look, when I first start, I mean, Twitter was 2009. That was mm. when ESPN forced Colin Coward and myself to get on Twitter. And we we're like, this is stupid. It'll never last. <laughs> like here we are. Um, and then you fast forward. It's just in a short period of time. It's like players. I always wondered how the professional athletes would embrace social media. And, the, and you see it. There's such a diversity in how people deal with it. Some people are just living their lives on social media and they share everything. Some guys, you just never hear from them at all. Um, others use it to launch their other businesses that they have on the side. I think that's the biggest thing that's changed is, is we're watching these guys launch their own media companies. And that has really changed the way we receive information, the way we consume information. I mean, they are capable and able and are breaking their own news on their own platforms, which is brilliant. I mean, it's taking away sort of the aha from those of us who kind of count on our abilities to break news. And when I say our, I don't mean mine. I don't do that. And I never have. Uh, but, <laughs> but other people whose like entire livelihood is based on breaking news. That power is being taken from them a little bit by a little bit. Uh, I mean, we watched it with Tom Brady 
Uh, you know, retirement part two. He just got on the old social and put out a 30 second video and that was it. So nobody could break the news for him. It was just out there and done with. So I do love that. And I love that the players are so powerful now, Um, not just their standing in their community, but the money that's involved and the idea they know they don't need any of us. There was a time when we were sort of the mouthpiece. No, I mean, I hate to say we're obsolete, but we're kind of obsolete. If they want to just ignore all of us and go about their business, they could. Luckily, they're contractually obligated to still talk to us <laughs> a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's kind of a fascinating shift in in how news is broken and how news is given out. Um, everybody's got a podcast. And so former players, current players, it's it's crazy. There are not enough hours in the day to consume all of this information. That is the hardest part about the world today and as far as what we do. You, it's impossible. You cannot listen and read it all. It's you oh, just can't. Oh, it is a lot. <laughs> you know it's, this. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is a lot, which kind of leads me to my next question. You know, when you kind of left the industry, it was because it was just getting a little, you know, out Ugh, of control. Garbage. Like it, the the fun was being taken out of it. The way some people were were acting in the in the <laughs> media just seemed like it just it just had ran you know rampant and it doesn't seem to have gotten better. No. <laughs> it, seems, it seems like more, it, it's actually a, a little bit more. How have you, for your, kind of, you know, your mental health, yeah. um, how have you been able to, you know, deal with social media, kind of not get back in that situation mm. where you feel like, you know, I, I'm getting upset for, you know, somebody that's in their basement in Nebraska, just talking crazy, you know, when you got back into it mentally, like, how was it like, you know, I want to make sure I don't get, you know, get into that thing where I'm not happy to get up to work e- each morning. Oh, God, no. Oh, yeah. I, I that, that that temptation to sort of dive into the pool uh, is long gone for me. Like I I there was a period of time. This was years ago where I I realized that the input of strangers was affecting not just me, but my personal relationships, my my day to day moods were being affected by the words of strangers that you know, when you just sit back and think like, this would never bother me in the real world. Like if a stranger says, I'd be like, okay, well, that guy's an ass. And then I move on with my day. But like, for some reason we, we allowed that. So turning off notifications, I only see comments from those people that I want to see comments from or whatever. And it's not like, oh, that's such a chicken way to live. No, it's not. It's just, you have to preserve your mental health because for every 100 great, nice comments, there's one bad one and our brains are wired such that the one bad one is what sticks with us. And I just, I eliminated the temptation to even see it. And it, I, I cannot recommend doing that enough to young people in this business because it's hard enough. You will deal with backstabbing and all of that from the people you think you're friends. Why invite strangers in to make you feel bad as well? Just, just no, it's not worth it. It ain't now, worth it. <laughs> now I have to ask you about your Spurs. Now, oh yeah, 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 yeah. How long is this uh, rebuild going to take, <laughs> and is Pop going to be there and to get back to their their glory? Because we've seen in the NBA before, you have these runs Absolutely. of championships, of, and then all of a sudden it's twenty years later, and you never, you know, gotten back. Yeah. Uh, how confident are you that they're headed in the right direction? And you know, how frustrated is it for you to kind of watch? them kind of go through this you know it's funny I, I you it would probably it could be more frustrating i think if the team wasn't the team that we have here right now and, and last year as well like i i know people I, i'm a home yes i am a homer i am 100 percent full disclosure everybody knows this but i will genuinely say because i've been a part of teams that were really really bad but also the guys weren't very likable and it just oh. made for a miserable season that's not what we have going on here we have such a great group of guys like kids really um that it's they're in these games they fight so hard like look they this is not rebuild to them this is their career you know this is we've got rookies they got brana we got sohan that this is the start of their hopefully long nba careers don't talk to them about rebuilding every night they go out there is their chance to sort of impress the world and and make the world know they exist and they're doing a great job about jeremy's jeremy's killing it And, and the coach pop part of that i think is very much connected to Jeremy in that regard, because when you watch the two of them together, you can see it like pop is, is coaching again. And he's made jokes about it. You know, he's like, yeah, back in the Timmy days, I didn't have to do anything. I just showed up and boom, done, you know, five, five rings later, here we are. He's coaching again. He's like having to sort of do that. And he's got Brett Brown back and you can see like, they are fighting every single night that they're out on that court. And I, the, the, the thing is like for three and a half quarters in it, 
killing it, <laughs> trying, trying so, so hard. People ask me, when's Pop going to retire? I, I have no idea. But I can tell you that watching him the last couple seasons and watching him with uh, Jeremy Sohan, who's been such a pleasant, lovely surprise, um, I don't think he's leaving. And and if mm. we get, you know, if we get a Wembenyama, if we get a mm. Scoot Henderson, like, why leave? You know, yeah. if you're having mm. fun and and pop jokes about it all the time too. He's like, they pay me to travel and eat at great restaurants and also watch and coach basketball. Like, why would I leave? So it, I think, I think he's very much like me in the regard of he's going to do it till he doesn't want to. And that could literally be whenever he feels like it. <laughs> we shall see. But I, for my own personal, I, I hope it's at least a few more years. Well, you know, once again, I want you to thank you for, you know, talking to me about this. I'm excited about your show and thank everything. You. I'm glad that you're back. Uh, before I let you go, I just want to tell you this. I want to tell you this little story. Oh, you know, many, 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 many years ago, <laughs> you took on this, this young, brash, <laughs> loud, not particularly funny guy who only had not. one suit coat in his possession. And you told <laughs> him to get all of his coins and come to New York and you would put him on your, your TV show oh. and, and you will give him a chance to tell his brand and tell his, his way of humor and his headlines, you know, to the world. And, and that guy was so grateful uh, for that because at that point in his life, not much was going well for him. Hmm. Not, a lot of things wasn't happening, right? He was starting to wonder if this was the business for him, but they gave him a little bit of a confidence boost that he needed to keep going, keep trying, keep pushing. And years later, that guy right now is talking to you from Los <laughs> Angeles, California, Yay! and has built a little bit of a, let's say, a mini empire himself See? and is as happy as he's ever been in his life with his beautiful wife, his lovely daughters, mm -hmm. and fans all across the world. And that would not have happened if not for one Michelle Beatles. Dude, so I want you know I can't handle know compliments. That. You know this makes I me know. highly uncomfortable. <laughs> everybody should know, though. So I want to make sure <laughs> when this goes on YouTube and Black Sports Online, oh, if you, somebody takes a little snippet of it and tries to cancel you, I want to yeah. make sure they also has this story uh, as well, because you're a very good person. You've always been a very good person. You're very good to people. You're very fair to everyone. And I just want people to know that when people are loyal to you and give you opportunities and give you shots and are genuinely nice people in media, people should know that. And I want everybody to make sure that they know that uh, about you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That was God. I know I'm just, I gotta go to the restroom or something. I feel uncomfortable. <laughs>